JT, hey, congratulations on tonight. Uh, I know kind of where the starts is the first time we had a chance to speak with you, but uh, just how you know long have you been waiting for this opportunity? Can you just explain, and it's maybe better for the coaches, I don't know, but why is it taking so long for you to get this opportunity? Uh, yeah, thank you, first of all. And, uh, yeah, you said it right there. Um, that is not my decision. Um, I've been getting healthy, uh, getting as many reps as I can on the scout team, uh, trying to get with the receivers as much as I can, uh, making sure I know the playbook and just getting ready. Um, but yeah, it, it, it feels really good. This is the first time I've taken a snap since August 31st, 2019 uh, in a whole nother part of the country. And uh, I really couldn't be happier, couldn't be more appreciative to Coach Smart, Coach Monk, and this whole team. Hey, uh, JT, can you kind of um, tell me when you were comfortable to kind of take this role? When did you feel like your knee was healthy enough? When did you feel like, um, like mentally, you would say, like, like, okay, I'm ready to go play? And then also, uh, what were your emotions on the last uh, drive there? Is victory formation and everybody chanting your name there? Gotcha. Great question. Um, so first with the, the knee and confidence, I've, I, I really haven't had much struggle with uh, confidence in my knee. Uh, to be honest with you, I think some of that comes from playing the quarterback position, um, not being asked to do all too much. That would really put a knee, uh, especially a right knee, in, um, you know, my back knee in that much uh, discomfort or to be in a position where, you know, I could potentially feel like I hurt it again. Um, it's just been a progression over time, uh, feeling a lot better. Uh, I feel really good right now in terms of knee health and uh, overall body health. And then uh, in, term, in terms of uh, emotions at the end on the, on the victory formation, um, it started to sink in a little bit. It still really hasn't yet, you know, that I, that I got to play football again. Um, I, I've really just felt a lot of gratitude, uh, gratitude for my family, uh, for this team, for this coaching staff, uh, for everyone for really helping me get back on my feet and uh, play football again. We'll next go to Paul Newberry, followed by Mark Weiser. I'm going to get unmuted there. <clears throat> JT, did you um, ever imagine after so long away that the first game, I mean, was this ever in your mind a game like this, 401 yards and uh, four TDs? Uh, absolutely. Um, you know, it, it's something you visualize and dream about. Uh, you know, you, putting up the numbers is, you know, it's great and all, and it's, you know, something you want to do. But, uh, you know, we, we weren't even paying attention to the numbers or, you know, any of that. It was just executing what Coach Munkin called, and I think he dialed up a phenomenal game plan. Uh, receivers did a great job of winning. And, uh, you know, the whole line starting up with uh, Trey Hill, uh, calling out the protections, uh, helping me out, and, you know, keep, keeping the whole thing going. Uh, it was just a great job from all of us. Hey, JT, uh, can you tell us what, what brought you to Georgia? Uh, you know, the opportunity was it was a Coach Munkin's offense. Did you think it was a good fit with, with uh, you know, his pro background? What exactly uh, brought you here? Both of those, absolutely. Um, I think Coach Smart is all about winning no matter what. It's, uh, you know, it's something I really respect. I think he does so much uh, himself for the team. He is uh, completely selfless. He is here to help, the, help these guys win games and uh, help us achieve our goals. So that's one thing. Um, two, I absolutely love the state of Georgia. Um, I had been in the South one time for the Manning Passing Academy and I fell in love with it uh, when I was down in Louisiana. Um, and then absolutely Coach Munkin's offense, uh, just getting to talk with him uh, through Zooms when I was in the transfer portal. Um, I knew he was a guy I'd love to play for. We'll next go to Chip Towers followed by Dean Leckie. Yeah, just two questions. One on football, JT. Uh, 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 you know, what about being able to do this with the run game struggling such as it was? It looked like you guys were trying really hard to get some kind of a run game going. And then, uh, you know, just uh, the offense itself, uh, was, was that – did you know this was what you were going to have to do today? Go deep. You went deep a bunch. Um, so in terms of the run game, I think first you've got to give a lot of credit to Mississippi, Mississippi State and uh, that, that front six and really the D coordinator too as well. Uh, they ran a bunch of stunts. They were doing a great job of, you know, playing right into it. Uh, and those guys are physical, tough dudes. Uh, it's a really good defense, um, if I'm being honest. Uh, and then, to, you know, also with that, when uh, we on film, we've been such a great run team. And uh, I think, uh, you know, we, we had to prove ourselves in the passing game a little bit. 
Uh, so they came out and they played a little more uh, cover zero, you know, no safeties. They put a little more man. Uh, re really, I think it was their emphasis to try and stop Zeus and Cook from, uh, you know, taking it up on him. And then, uh, no, I did not think we would have to come out and be throwing the ball that much. But, you know, that's football. You play the game, uh, see their game plan, see what they're trying to stop, and then you counter it. Hey, JT, uh, I don't want to read into it too much. You, you said a couple of times that you were thankful to play football again. Did you think it was that serious uh, coming off of the injury? And then secondly, are we to expect 400-yard passing from you every single game? Uh, what do you mean by uh, the, the first question? Well, like I said, I don't want to read into it too much. It, you've said you were thankful to play again. Um, did you think the knee oh, was – Oh, no, I did not think it was the uh, end-all, be-all. I'm just thankful that I do get to play football. Uh, it's been a long time since I've taken a game snap. Uh, it feels great to do it again. And then uh, what was the second question again? Are you going to throw for 400 yards every game? Um, you know, we love putting up good numbers. And if the situation presents itself, I'll throw George the ball, I'll throw Kiaris, Jermaine the ball, D-Rob, all of them. I'll throw them the ball every time. Um, but if, the, if you get a team playing soft, well, I would have no problem giving Zamir and Cook the ball and Kenny and Kendall and all those guys the ball every single play. We'll next go to Mike Griffith, followed by uh, Jay Groh. Uh Yeah, JT, can you just talk about the confidence of, of putting that ball deep? I mean, you were really pushing it downfield. I know that's what they were giving you, but it just seemed like in a lot of those situations, even third down throws was fearless. Did you read that right off the ball, or was that something that happened as the play progressed? Yeah, it was, it was definitely something I saw. Again, they, they were trying to send a little more pressure. They were playing more one high and uh, zero high than they had shown on film. Um, but that's kind of the thing. If you have George Pickens and Jermaine Burton, uh, if you're not going to throw it up to them, don't recruit them. You know, I mean, George will make me look good. Jermaine makes me look good. Kiaris makes me look really good when I underthrow a deep ball down the middle and makes a great play. Um, if you're going to give one-on-one -on -one with George, Kiaris, and Jermaine and all our guys, I'm probably going to want to make you try and show me that you can stop it. Uh, JT, I wanted to ask you about that first drive. Um, you know, you hit the 28-yard pass, and then, uh, you know, things kind of get a little bit shaky after that. Uh, how much, how big was that in terms of allowing you to shake off the rush, shake off the jitters, and, and get back to your game? Uh, that was huge. Um, yeah, it's a great question because that, that really was it. It's getting your first hit and throwing your first stupid throw. Um, and that's what it was. It was a dumb throw, almost got picked, and then I got hit, and I was like, all right, it's football again. We'll next go to Seth Emerson, followed by Augusta Stone. Hey, uh, JT, let me go back to preseason. When, when Jamie Newman opted out, people kind of assumed you would move in, that you, would, you were taking first-team snaps with Jamie. What happened at that point? Did you have any sort of setback with the knee, or to your mind, was it just performance-related that Dwan and Stetson moved ahead of you? Um, I, was not, so I was not cleared for the Arkansas game. Um, uh, other than that, that, that's really, you know, coach decision based. Uh, I think Jamie's decision was separate. I can't speak on it. You know, um, that's, I, I don't know everything about it. Um, but no, I, I did not look into that as, uh, you know, like, oh, I got, you know, something happened to me or anything. Um, I was not cleared for Arkansas and uh, th th that was all, you know, coach Mark's decision. Hey, JT, this is Austin. Um, so obviously you were able to to develop a connection with multiple receivers tonight. Um, were you worried about that coming into the game, given the fact that you haven't had that many reps, I guess, with those receivers? Or, I mean, where was your confidence level at coming into the night? Yeah, so there, there definitely was, I wouldn't say concerns, but it was something, you know, that, that was in my mind. Uh, I had not thrown with those guys for a little while. Um, but, you know, when, when you have guys like George and Kiers and Jermaine and uh, you know, guys that you know are going to be in the right spot when they're supposed to be. It's not really as much of, you know, I, I have to have a million throws with them. I trust them to be in the right spot, and it's my job to put them in the right spot. We'll next go to Jeff Schultz, followed by Allison Mastrangelo. Yeah, um, JT, following up an earlier question, you, you said you weren't cleared for the Arkansas game, but when did you feel ready to play either both physically and mentally in your timing? When did you feel like you were ready to go out there and play this year? Um, I really appreciate Ron Corson, our, our head of tra training, um, because he really did wait till I was ready to play. I'd say as soon as I got cleared, I would say I was ready to go out and play football. 
but it absolutely should be said that I've progressed, uh, you know, a good amount since then. And we're still progressing every week to try and get, you know, full strength and full health back there. Hey, JT. Um, I was more so curious, when did Kirby tell you this week that you were going to start? And did he kind of leave it out that it was your job moving forward or it was kind of game by game? Um, I, I got called in on Monday and he said, you know, we're, we're going to give you a shot and we're going to go with you. And that was about the end of that. So, uh, you know, just go from there. We'll, we'll next go to Maria Martin, followed by Connor Riley. JT, you talked about that first drive. You had to shake off the cobwebs a little bit. At what point in the game did you feel like, all right, I'm back. I'm in a rhythm. I feel really good. I'd say after that drive, um, everything kind of settled in. Uh, they're playing very similar to what we saw on film in terms of, you know, the, the looks that we've seen. Uh, we have a great game plan for it. I had my bad plays. Time to move on. And then you've obviously been the guy that's been hyping up your other quarterbacks and guys on the sidelines all up until this point. What were the players saying to you when you got back and you were really on a roll? Oh, they were tremendous. Uh, you know, especially at Stetson and Car and you know, really all the guys, Stetson, Carson, and Dewan. It's a, it's, it's a really phenomenal quarterback uh, quarterback room to be a part of. Uh, I think everyone's really supportive of each other. Uh, you know, we, 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 all four of us want the team to win uh, before we want anything else. And, uh, you know, Stetson and I have been really good friends uh, since I got here. Uh, I really appreciate him. I'm always there to help him out. And he was there uh, the whole night to help me out. Hey, JT, on that final touchdown drive guy, you guys had, you put a throw right on Kiaris and he drops it. And then you put a throw on George and it looks like he drops it. Where was your mind sort of before that final touchdown pass to Kiaris? And what did you see on the play there? Um, it was really next play. Uh, it's not something you think about. You, you know, didn't come up with two plays in a row. Uh, and like, you know, as soon as that happens, you're like, damn, wish that happened. Um, but I, I really focus on staying neutral. Um, you know, not getting down on ourselves for that, not getting too up and, you know, just being overly positive for no reason. But uh, my thoughts were sp purely on the coverage, the play, uh, best look, best probability of who's going to win and throw it up to Kiaris. We'll next go to Blaine Gilmer, followed by Alec McQuaid. Hey, uh, JT, how, how shocked were you to see zero coverage on that third and 20? Uh, where you where Kier scored there at the end, and then also how much uh, leeway did you have to change in and out of plays um, this week? That's a great question. Um, was I surprised? I'm not going to say I was surprised at seeing cover zero. Uh, not only, Mississippi State has shown it, but not only them. Uh, it's something you'll see a decent amount. Um, you'll get cover zero trying to get you to just throw the ball out uh, quick, get out your hands, uh, rally and tackle, and get off the field. Um, so it wasn't too surprising, but I was when I knew what we had called um, when I saw the zero shell, I was real excited because I knew we were about to score. Um, and then in terms of what I'm allowed to do at the line, um, I'd like to say pretty much anything that I'd want within the system. Um, so we have certain plays that are called checks. We have you know certain things where if you get this look, check to this. Um, and, and I think Co Coach Munkin gives really all of us a lot of freedom uh, to put us in the right play. And he's all about having quarterbacks enhance the play. Um, you know, there's only so much that he can do uh, in, you know, calling a play before we see the defense. Uh, he, he, he loves to have, uh, you know, a quarterback that can see the defense and then fix whatever needs to be fixed. We'll next go, uh, probably our last two questions tonight, we'll go to Emily Gagnon, followed by uh, Lance McCurley. Okay, we'll just go to Lance McCurley for our final question this evening. Hey, JT, even though it wasn't a uh, packed house here at Stanford tonight, um, you know, what was, what was it like uh, playing in, in – uh, I know you've been, you know, at a fair game of the season, but what's it like playing in front of the home crowd in a night game at Stanford, and how does it compare to playing in the Pac-12 at, at most of those night games? Yeah, um, good point. I really can't uh, judge too much just because we're not even close to full capacity with the, uh, everything going on. But uh, I mean, I, I can't say enough about how great the fan base here is. Um, they've been super great with me. Um, wish I got to meet some more of them this year. Uh, but uh, it, it's, it's such a great experience. Uh, what we do going in the fourth quarter with, you know, the red lights and everything, 
uh, I absolutely love what we do here. JT, thanks and uh, congratulations on a great game.